Hi everyone, um, welcome again to my Facebook Live post. It's always such a pleasure to talk to you. Today I wanted to spend a little bit of time to, for us all to send an intention out into the world for peace. In fact, the idea was given to me by a lovely lady named Alice Holmes who posted on my Facebook page and she was thinking of the people in Syria right now, in war-torn Syria. So what I want to do is maybe if all of you can just put your hand on your heart for just maybe 30 seconds, that's all, as you listen to this and just send your intention right now to all the places in the world that are going through trouble and war and any kind of adversity. And this is not just the cities, but it's the people within the cities. It's individuals, even individuals who are suffering from any kind of pain or hurt or abuse, anything like that. Just send your loving intention to them right now, right now. My heart goes out to all of them and I know that your heart goes out to all of them. People write to me all the time to ask me what do I think about all the things that are happening in the world right now. I know that as a planet, as a race or as a culture of people, so many of us are hurting, so many of us are hurting and I truly believe that when the planet is hurting, it means that we as individuals are hurting. So it's also very important for you to heal yourself and heal your own heart as you go through this process. As you send love and healing to other people, heal your own heart as well. So now even just for a moment, just for a few seconds, I want you to close your eyes and put your hand on your heart and I want you to intend healing for yourself, for all your own pain and for all the adversity that you've been through and for everything, for your journey that's brought you to this point here right now. I want you to embrace who you are right now and accept who you are and where you are in this moment, wherever it might be, whether you like what your life has turned out to be or not. Even if you don't like what is around you, I want you to accept it right now. It doesn't mean, accepting it doesn't mean that you want to stay in this, in this space forever. It just means you're acknowledging this is where I am and then you can move forward from here. It means not being in denial of where you are right now. The sooner you can accept it, the sooner that it can pass. It's really important to honor yourself and to love yourself. And I always say this to people that I know that I know your heart and I know that you want to go out and heal the world. I know that you want to change the world. I know that sometimes it makes you angry, the things that are going on out there, the things that feel unfair. But here's what happens. If we are driven from a place of anger and fear to go out and change the world, the person we bring out into the world is someone who is angry and fearful. And it's anger and fear that creates the problems in the first place. And by bringing an angry and fearful person out into the world, we're just adding to it. This is why I always say, it's so important to love yourself and to embody love, to become an embodiment of love, to find your joy, to heal your heart, and then bring that embodiment of love, that healed heart, bring that out into the world. When you bring that person out into the world, you don't even need to say anything or do anything. Your very presence is healing for the people around you. And that's all you need to do. By the way, I welcome your questions. So I'm going to actually check. Oh, and before I do, I want to mention that my dear friend, 
James John from Laugh, L-A-F. He's going to be doing a Facebook Live, I think if, uh, in less than an hour, 5 p.m. Pacific, which is 8 p.m. Eastern time. So he's going to be live. I just adore him. He's, he gives the best hugs. He's one of the most loving people in the universe. The one of the most loving people that I have had the pleasure to meet. So I would love for you to tune in and, and listen to his Facebook live video. So in, that's in less than an hour. So that's at LAF and his name is James John. So don't forget to tune in. You will love him. <laughs> I know you will because he's just one of the most beautiful souls. So I'm going to call out to my beautiful social media coordinator because sometimes I have trouble seeing the questions that come up. Please continue to share your questions. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your message, Susan Stewart, Pam, Pam Buswell Chamberlain. Yes, bring self-acceptance into the world, not our anger. Yes. James John. Hi, thank you. <laughs> hi from Canada. Noira Cabo Bruce. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I love you guys so much too. I love Canada. I love Canadian people. I love that you love my book, but I also, I love America. I love, I love Australia. I love Asia. I love all of you. Europe. Oh my gosh. Oh, and I'm going to France next week. So if anybody's going to be in Paris, I'm doing an event in Paris at the end of this month. I'm doing an event in the south of France. I think it's next week. Please check my calendar. I'm also going to be at Celebrate Your Life next month in November, which is in Phoenix, Arizona. So please join me in all those places and say hi when you're there. And uh, as always, I can't seem to see the questions on my Facebook. So I'm going to ask Milena, shoot me a question. <laughs> Anne Blake is asking if everyone will send her best friend son, Darren, lots of love. He's been in a coma for the past four months, so we just Aww. join in sending him love. Yes, so Anne from Ireland, she wants to send her best friend's son, Darren, love, and he's been in a coma for the last four months, and they're in Ireland. So everybody, please send him love. And my message also for Anne is that to please, for his family, his parents, his family, to please keep talking to him while he's in the coma and just tell him how much he's loved, unconditionally loved, no matter what decision he makes, whether he chooses to come back or not, um, that he is loved unconditionally and he needs to do whatever that's best for his highest good. And it's important that he is surrounded by people who just send him love because he can hear you and he can also feel everybody's energy. And I'm sure he can feel the energy right now of everybody sending him our love. So everyone, just for the next few seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, just send him your love right now. And intend your love for everybody who is hurting right now and who's in a coma right now. Thank you. And, and any other questions you see? Um. Robin Bacue says, I had an NDE and my personality changed completely. Did this happen to you and how yes. did your family, you and your family deal? If so. so Robin asks, uh, Robin says that they had an NDE and their personality changed completely. And did that happen to me? Yes, it's absolutely happened to me. And I love sharing that story because I was completely different after the NDE. And although I say my personality, my personality changed, as you say your personality changed as well, actually I became who I was meant to be. I became who I was born to be. And what I realized was my NDE caused me to become the person that I had intended to become when I was born into this world. But this person was conditioned out of me by society, by education, by culture, all of these things. And I, I realized that that was not who I was meant to be. I was meant to be someone who shined my light brightly and who was fearless about expressing who I am. But I had become someone who had shrunk and, and I had dimmed my light and I had become so small and I would become a people pleaser. So all the people I attracted were attracted to that person I had become that people pleaser and that person who was a doormat and allowed myself to be walked all over and abused by other people. And after my NDE, I realized that's not who I was supposed to be. 
And yes, I did lose a few people. Don't be afraid about that because just because you're being yourself, it doesn't mean you're becoming a worse person. It doesn't mean you're becoming a bad person because when you get in touch with who you truly are, that person at your core is pure love. It's pure love. We're sometimes afraid, especially women are afraid, that when we get in touch with our truth and express it, we're afraid that we're suddenly going to become bitchy or ballsy or all these things. Well, there's nothing wrong with being those things, first of all. But secondly, <clears throat> it doesn't make you a nasty person. It actually makes you a more beautiful person. Because when you are afraid of being who you are and you think it's going to make you nasty, what you're saying is that who you are underneath is nasty when it's not. Who you are is pure love, pure God. So Robin, be unafraid of expressing who you are. Be all that you can be. And the people who stay by you are the ones who truly love you unconditionally for who you are. And I'm going to say that even though I felt I was losing a couple of people, quite a few people at that time, I need to separate. I needed to separate myself from them to discover the truth of who I was. Later on, as I grew into this new being that I was becoming, all those people I thought I'd lost came back. They all came back. And so I want you to take the risk and do that too. Um, and go ahead, another question. He Yun asks, how do you protect yourself emotionally when you are able to feel the emotions of painful events? That's an excellent question. He Yun asks, how do you protect yourself emotionally when you're able to feel the emotions of painful events? That is a really good question. You will need to spend a lot of time on your own. The first thing I ask you to do, invite you to do, is to not judge the events as being negative or positive. Sometimes we put our own meaning onto events and we put our own judgment onto them as being negative and positive. I know with some events, there's just no way, no way that you can spin it to be positive. Like if you witness an event where there are multiple people being killed or something like that, it's just very hard. There's no way you can even spin something to be a positive event. But what I, first of all, I would ask you to protect yourself from being exposed to such events, especially if it's continuously. I want to remind you that being sensitive is not a bad thing. It's a very good thing. It's a sign of strength. It's not a sign of weakness. I also invite you to look back at one of my past videos where I say that sensitive is the new strong, where I want you to embrace your sensitivity, embrace it, acknowledge it, give it front, front and center stage and know that it's a good thing. And then I want you to start identifying the positive traits you have as a result of your sensitivity and focus on those. Um, the feeling hurt from painful events is the downside of being sensitive, but every single trait we have has a downside and an upside. And I don't even like to call it downside and upside because that's a judgment. I like to call it yin and yang. Every trait that we have, every single, every single one, even people who are considered kind and good and giving, there is always an, a flip side to it, a yin and a yang. And sometimes those who give too much to other people forget to give to themselves to the point where they become drained and to the point where they become needy and need others to fulfill them. So every trait, including being sensitive, has a flip side. So I want you to know that even though you're feeling sensitivity when negative things happen, just know that that trait has a very, very positive quality to it and just focus on the positive side of that. So thank you for that question. Um, another question? Okay. Roy thanks you for making the world a better place and he asks, what is the biggest challenge in your life today and how do you deal with it? Oh, wow, I love that question. Okay, thank you, Roy. I love that question. Roy asks me, what is the biggest challenge in my life and how do I deal with it? Okay, so one of the biggest challenges in my life is that I am aware that my story and me and everything I'm about and everything I speak about attracts a very vulnerable audience. 
I'm very aware of that. And I am so um, careful about what I want to, what messages I want to give you because I know that I attract an audience that, because you are who I was, so I know you. I know that my audience are people who um, are dealing with painful situations, illnesses. Not all of you are, mind you, a lot of you are thriving. I know that and that's what I love to hear. And my, my aim is to take you from that pain to, to thrive and to know that, and to give you hope and to take you to a joyful place and to tell you that, that it's great, that you're supposed to be happy, you're supposed to find joy. But the biggest challenge I do have is that I do know that when people come to me, when they're attracted to my work, they are at this vulnerable place. And I find sometimes, although my message is be authentic, be joyful, be all that you can be, I do find that I'm still very careful about what I deliver when I am dealing with a very vulnerable audience. And I don't know if I've articulated that very well, but sometimes I am always measuring between, okay, be, be everything I can be and tell people it's okay, find your joy. And at the same time, I get drawn into what people are feeling, the vulnerability I get drawn. It's like having one foot on the joy and one foot on the pain. And that is the hardest thing I juggle with, having one foot in the pain that everyone is feeling and one foot in the joy that I'm trying to bring everyone into. I hope that made sense. So thank you for that question, Roy. And yes, let's do another one. A couple people are asking for your thoughts on suicide. Okay, so my thoughts on suicide is the question. Um, I, uh, this is probably not going to be a popular opinion, but I will say it, exactly what's in my heart. I think that there is nothing wrong with assisted suicide. Having said that, I think if somebody is healthy, but just going through some emotional issues, I, I truly feel that there is always help and they need to know that the emotional issues will pass. Emotional issues will pass. Truly, fe I truly feel that. So I do not want people to feel that suicide is is okay and that it's fine to just cross over. I truly feel that. Now, I feel that people who have taken their own lives are not being judged when they're in the other realm. They're absolutely not being judged. In fact, I speak about this a fair amount in my new book, What If This Is Heaven? They are being welcomed with open arms because it takes a lot of pain for somebody to take their own life. A lot of pain. So they're not then crossing over and dealing with punishment and more pain. Absolutely not. They are being welcomed. If you know someone who has taken their own life, please rest assured that they are fine. Absolutely fine. And if you're talking about suicide from the perspective of someone who's going through a lot of physical pain and they truly don't feel there's any way they're going to turn around, then um, I feel that in some cases it is more humane to allow them to pass. But um, in very, very rare cases. I truly believe though that everybody is here for a reason and for a purpose. And it's truly the best thing we can do is allow our lives to take their natural course and in time we will all pass over. So to anybody listening in who's considering taking their life, I want you to know that if I had taken my life too soon, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to do what I'm doing today. So don't, I would suggest don't do it. Please don't do it. There's still so many gifts waiting for you. So thank you so much everybody for tuning in. A lot of what I talked about today, I have spoken about or I have written about in my book, What If This Is Heaven? And um, in fact, um, I will, I would, if you have read it, if you have read it, 
I would love to hear your feedback and I would love, love, love it if you sent me a review. This is the book. That was my doorbell, not yours. I know in the past that when my doorbell has rung, um, your dogs have barked. Those of you who have dogs, you've wrote to me and you've said your dogs barked. So that was my doorbell, not yours. And this is my book, What If This Is Heaven? And that's probably the pizza guy for Danny or something. <laughs> So please, please, please um, send me your feedback about the book. Send me your feedback about this video. And please tune in to James John, who will be on the top of the hour. And of course, even if you miss the timing, it'll be there on his page at LAF. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Love you all. See you all soon. Mwah.